Thank you for checking out this short. I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Peace. Cool. Listen, let's jump into it, fellas. I want to get into this topic here. I know it's heavy, as I mentioned before. Um, racism, prejudice, and discrimination. And I wanted to start out. Uh, some of the goals here, I figured, was like, let's define racism first. Uh, let's start with that. And then maybe talk about some personal experiences you might have with racism. Um, there was a question. Like, we all talked about this. We talked about what, what are some of the different topics we could talk about just over um, the next couple of weeks or months as we do our podcast. And so one question was, can black people be racist? We're going to talk about that. Is there racism amongst ourselves within the black community? And then what can be done to thwart racism, prejudice, and discrimination? So that's kind of where I want to start and wanted to talk with you all about that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read off some descriptions to you as we get into this here. I'm going to read off the description of prejudice, the description of discrimination and then racism and then let's talk about those topics cool so prejudice refers to irrational or unjustifiable negative emotions or evaluations towards persons from other social groups and it is the primary determinant of discriminatory behavior and by the way um i, I gathered i gathered this information from the national association of school of psychologists um in an article they put together the discrimination is defined as inappropriate treatment of people because of their actual or perceived group membership and may include both overt and covert behaviors, including microaggressions or indirect or subtle behaviors. Like microaggressions would be something like, you know, you walking down the street, a bunch of brothers walking down the street, a white woman's walking down the street and she crosses the street microaggression right uh she she clutches her purse as we walk by microaggression um racism refers to prejudice or discrimination against individuals or groups based on beliefs about one's own racial superiority or belief that race reflects inherent differences in attributes and capabilities racism is the basis for social stratification and differential treatment that advantage the dominant group. It can be take, excuse me, it can take many forms, including explicit racial prejudice and discrimination by individuals and institutions. So for example, um, we have the Jim Crow, right? Jim Crow was what you would consider uh, explicit racial behavior. That's where state and local laws passed uh, during the, the end of reconstruction through the mid 1950s where white Southerners basically asserted their dominance by denying African-Americans social, economic, and civil rights, such as the right to vote, right? And so when we talk about uh, also another form of inequality would be uh, racism can also take the form of unconscious beliefs, stereotypes, <clears throat> baller, stereotypes, and attitudes toward racial groups in the form of implicit bias, right? Or what we would call unconscious bias, things we do, you know, not really aware of, right? Uh, other forms of racism are modern symbolic racism in which individuals deny continued existence of racism, excuse me, racial inequality while contributing to discrimination and advert, excuse me, adversive racism through group favoritism or dominant racial group. That's a lot of information, right? But I want to focus on just kind of a few things, right? Um, we, we talked about, have you ever experienced, and I want to go through this section by section, but prejudice, let's start with prejudice. What do you think when we think about the definition, irrational or unjustifiable negative emotions or evaluations toward persons or other social groups? So can we as black people be prejudiced? Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure can. Yeah, for sure, right? Yeah. I think that goes to the point of one one individual saying uh, one of the questions we had asked initially, we thought we could add it into the topic is light skinned brothers versus black brothers, right? Dark skinned brothers, right? Can we be prejudiced against one another in in that form? Of course, you sure can. Absolutely. Be. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Have you all just experienced any discrimination in that uh, prejudice in that way? Oh, definitely different levels. Yeah. Many times. Different levels. You want to share maybe a story or two? Actually, as it pertains um, to that, I was uh, 
I think I was in 11th grade, you know, and uh, I was dating a young lady. Um, <clears throat> I want to say she was about old soul's complexion. And um, her mother and father, of course, same complexion. And, uh, and she had a, br a brother and a sister. They lived uh, in an area of Philadelphia where they had a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. So of course I was invited over for this barbecue when I had fun in the pool. So the mother I've met, it was just always hi, Miss So-and-so and being respectful every time I would come over. And I never looked at anything other than just me coming over hi and going about my business, watching TV or whatever. So this particular barbecue, she actually comes out. Now, mind you, it's about like, including me, it was about like eight people. Mm -hmm. She asked each individual, would you like something to drink? Except for me. And I was like, I let it go. So she brought these drinks out to each individual. Right. Including her daughter, gave them all the drinks. And I was like, so I pulled her daughter to the side. I was like, well, kind of, what's up with that? And she was like, Barry, my mom really doesn't care for you. I said, I never disrespected your mom. Well, she doesn't like light-skinned guys. I was like, what? Now, mind you, at 11th grade, I'm like 16, 17. Right. And I'm like, that was the first time an adult did that. Growing up, I always got guys didn't like light-skinned guys for whatever their reasons. But this was a grown woman saying this, or a grown woman doing this. And <clears throat> it made me kind of like take a step back. And like, I've never done anything disrespectful to this woman, you know? And at that age, I was mentally messed up about it, mm. you know? And I'm like, wow, you know? And then I kind of dug into a little bit. I never approached her mom about it. I dug into her daughter a little bit more about it. You know, and she was like, how? she was treated, you know, because you got to figure at that time, she might have been in her 40s. So um, back then in the 19, uh, I want to say the 1940s to early 50s, it was that racial tension going on. Mm -hmm. So her being a dark complected woman, she caught what she caught. And that kind of sat her in her ways. Mm -hmm. So of course, me being light-skinned and dating her daughter, she didn't care for that at all. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. You know? Hey, um, also, what you, you mentioned yes, too. What were you, as far as prejudice is concerned, you said you had people you felt were prejudiced against you? I mean, I, I, I dealt with a lot hmm. um, growing up. You know, I had all the, the jokes and everything like that. But one of the, one of the many issues uh, that happened to me when I was young um, my parents separated when I was young, so mm -hmm. I would go over to my father's during the weekend or during the summer. And, of course, you know, he continued to see other, you know, he, he saw the women and stuff like that. He would invite them over to the house. So this one specific time, I think I was maybe around, you know, around 9 or 10. I'm in the living room. I'm coming in his living room. I'm playing, you know, action figures or something like that. He had a lady over. <clears throat> so I said hello and I left out. So I happened to hear her say, oh, who's that little black boy uh, in your house? Mm -hmm. And I heard my father say, what did you just say? Uh, she said, I want, who's that little black boy running around your house? She said, that's my son. Matter of fact, and I, I didn't know it. I just heard the black, I heard the black part. And I immediately, immediately hurt my feelings. You know, I like went upstairs or whatever. Um, so... I went upstairs. My, my father didn't see me for a little bit. Then my father came up. was like, what's wrong? I was like, well, you know, I thought we were all black. You know, I, why would she say that about me? You know, he said, well, you don't have to worry about it because I just told her to leave. She, she'll never come past this house again. Mm -hmm. So right then and there, that was one of the <coughs> issues that I realized something different about me. And then that's when I thought, you know, maybe it has something to do with my skin color because I thought we were all black. But apparently, it made me feel blacker than anybody in the room. Mm. And that was what she wanted to accomplish. And it, it, it hurt my feelings. My father had to sit down and talk to me about it. He was like, look, at the end of the day, you're my child, you're my son. I don't, if somebody comes in here that's like any part of my family for whatever reason, they'll never come back to this house. So what people don't realize, when you make a comment like that, that resonates. So that stayed with me 
Mm. Like I said, growing up, that's all I got was the dark skin jokes, the inferior jokes. Like it made me feel inferior, like I did not belong, yeah. even to the point where I was became a teenager. But that was one of the the early um, one of the early comments that I, derogatory comments I got about my complexion. Mm. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that, man. Yeah. Uh, crooner, preacher, either of you experience any prejudice? Oh, definitely. I had some. Um, I um. I grew up in Chicago on the South side. It was predominantly black. Mm -hmm. And I got myself in trouble after Dr. King passed. Mm -hmm. um, all I heard was that we ride against white folks. So the few white folks we had to school, we pretty much chased them out of there. Well, I got busted behind that and they sent me to a uh, reform school. Mm -hmm. And unlike what you see on TV, reform school is like 90% white. And they didn't really black to reform school. I'm like, whoa. So, um, I was there. Been going to reform school for a while, for about maybe a year now. So they started letting us have time time off. The one of my best friends was a guy named Edwin. Edwin was white. Mm -hmm. We've been talking back and forth to our parents about you know one another. So his mom said, "Let a Mallory come over." You know, so um, did she know you were black at this time? No, had no idea. Mm -hmm. She didn't know I was his friend. And with a name like Mallory, you know, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's a yeah. given. You know, mm -hmm. so um. When I got to the house, she had lemonade and sandwiches and chips. At like about 12 o'clock in the afternoon, we got over there. And she was really nice to me, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we sat down and ate. And um, I heard her say, uh, Edwin, come here. So he went through the swinging door. And she said, why you got this nigger in my house? Mm. So, that was, so you, you experienced full on racism. And, and, I, I like, and I like, I was shocked. I heard her. So I got my little my little bag because I had a I was supposed to stay all night. I got my backpack and I was about to leave out the door and he came back in. He said, he said, Mallory, I'm sorry. Mm. I said, it's all right, man. It's all right. Mm. I said, it's all right. And I heard her rimming him out when I was going out, like, you know, your dad don't like more niggas in his house, la la. And I just got out of there. I went to the corner store. I was crying. I called my mom. She sent my cousin out to get me. Now we now we in a different kind of hood. So my cousin got out there. He said, come on, man, come on. I said, what's wrong? Man, white folks out here, they're going to kill us. We can't get the hell out of here. So he was ready to go. Wow. <laughs> he was in the wrong neighborhood. You know? So that experience you experienced was a uh, definitely oh, devastating clear racism, right? So, so have, you, have you experienced any prejudice uh, amongst other black people? Oh, yeah, definitely. I had that too. Talk to me about that. But the other black people, it was like um, something, something what the baller said. Um, and it, it was really, it really rubbed me the wrong way, but I really didn't do nothing. I just kind of laughed it off. I went to visit some darker friends, you know, at their house and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then they pretty much said, what we going through, and I can't believe they said this, what we going through, you ain't gonna go through because of the complexion you are. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh, 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 like, what the hell did this come from? What did I do to, to get this attack? And they all turned <clears throat> around and looked at me like, yeah, they said, yeah. You know, it goes back in history, and they gave me history lesson, which I already knew the history lesson of. You know, because you know the slaves had the light skinned blacks in the house, and the dark skinned out in the field, and they kept them against one another. Therefore, when you want information, you got information because they were telling on one another. You know, so yeah, I've I've seen it. I've seen it. Interesting, interesting. I witnessed. Uh -huh. You know, go go ahead. Oh, uh, I wanted to. Were you going with preacher? Anybody? Um, I well, wanted to check a little bit on what Bruner said. <laughs> it's something that he brought that up because that kind of one of my other issues I dealt with with prejudice uh, early in my uh, work career uh, where I was working in. And one of the guys uh, who was about baller's complexion, uh, maybe a little bit. And he kind of, he always ragged me because I got along with, uh, you know, with white people, a lot of the, you know, some of the people, co-workers, uh, I got along with. Mm -hmm. And he would always rip me about it. He would always throw little little digs about me getting along with it to the point that he was trying to make it feel like I wasn't black enough to be around black people. Mm -hmm. And that kind of got in my head. So one of the people that I was teamed up with was, uh, was a, a girl. She was a uh, black woman. And we got along well. And she came to me one day. She knew it was, it was getting in my head. So what she said was, she said, it's not you, Carl, it's him. She says, the problem is, and, and she broke it down like this. She says, his problem is that his slave masters, okay, was being, he was, his, his ancestors were being passed around while your, your people were working in the fields. And he can't live with that. 
she broke it down like that, that I was more closer to our African continent than he was. So, you know, whether that makes you feel good or not, but she wanted to break it down and try to get me out of my own head. So I had to chime in on that, on that kind of what the crooner was saying in regards to that, that, that slave ship type of mentality. Yeah, yeah. Donald. Thanks for sharing that, man. Donald, because I, I got I want that that brought something to mind for me to share. Donald. Yes. Um, yeah, so I've experienced it. All right, let, let me I grew up in a white neighborhood. Okay. I grew up in a white neighborhood my entire life. Uh in elementary school, my mom had moved us out to Ben Salem. My there was only two black people in the entire school, and that was me and my sister. Okay, so yeah, we exp I experienced it. You can't walk into a you know the whole nine that everyone's goes through. But more importantly, as far as the, uh, the my own family, I experienced it in my own family. Not not you know light skin. Oh, you you light skin and you talk this way. That was the big thing, right? Exactly. You light skin, you talk this way. I had certain cousins. I had certain cousins that didn't rock with me because they didn't like the way I spoke. I had certain cousins that didn't think I was black enough because I was born and raised in Holmesburg. So when I would go to their, my, you know, certain family functions, um, you know, I was that, me and my sisters were like the outcast. Oh, they're, we can't talk to them because they don't know how to, they don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to talk the way we talk. So, so yeah, um, that, that, that's something that, you know, uh, culturally we had to really adapt to, right? But I'm a different type of person. So certain things that face, affect other people, I kind of just shrug off. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, all white neighborhood, all white schools, uh, the prejudice from the teachers, not thinking that, you know, we're smart enough, you know, because obviously because they have a, a, a negative connotation on what, you know, regardless of, you know, I'm brown skin, mm -hmm. I'm not light skin. Mm -hmm. Then even just recently, the girls that I coach, they're like, oh, Coach Frank, you're light skin. I don't even consider myself light skin. Like Barry, I'm sorry, uh, B, he's light skin. Me and you, I mean, I'm brown skin, but they yeah. consider me to be light skin. Yeah. I had family members that favored certain grandchildren mm. because mm. of the color of their skin mm. in my family. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. That's interesting, man. Um, so you were talking, especially when you talk about teachers, you talk about that implicit bias, right? They assume that you're just not smart enough because of the way you look, right? So also brought up a point. I didn't think about this, man. This is guy, Kobe Cole, back in Philly. Kobe fucking Cole. Radio personality, I guess, or whatever he does, right? I I was dating this black girl, ended up dating this white girl, and he's like, look, she cheated on me, right? The, the black girl, and he's like, look. So I ended up dating, you know, start dating this white girl. He's like, oh, you ain't black, this and that. But it, to, to, to old soul's point, first of all, I don't give a fuck. I didn't care then, don't care now. But it just, it made me think about it. I'm like, what the hell? Okay. <laughs> he, he, he was very light-skinned because to your point also, I was like, damn, maybe he can, maybe he got a problem, right? Right? Like maybe he is the problem, you know? Um, I, 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 you know, I'm trying to think. I'm sure I've experienced other prejudices, right? When it comes to like um, being poor, right people judging me because i'm poor and them having money right you know even in, but i grew up in you know we all grew up in and well not so not, well i would say poor neighborhoods but uh neighborhoods where we were you know i grew up on welfare right um but it's interesting right because i think about just me myself as an individual have i been prejudiced have i prejudged other people and i have of course right like, it's just kind of a, it's like a, it's almost like a natural progression of kind of making this, you make this assessment, but, but I have to draw the differentiation between like, when you read this definition, irrational, unjustifiable, negative emotions or evaluations towards persons of the other social groups, right? It's not just about skin. It could be about weight, right? It could be about, you know, your gender, I mean, it could be a number of things. And, and for me, you know, I, I do my best to, to try not to be an individual who prejudges, right? Prejudice is essentially prejudging someone. Um, and it's difficult, but I think we all have that tendency. The question is, is how do we control it? Yeah, Donald. I'm going to take you to back to Lincoln High School in 1981 mm. when you guys 
just started getting bused to the neighborhood, right? Lincoln High School was my neighborhood school. Mm-hmm. I had cats from Logan, East O'Blaine, Mount Airy. I had cats from that area who didn't like me mm-hmm. because I wasn't from that Logan, area, uptown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that is because they had a preconceived notion, which you just said, a prejudging, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas if I had family in Lincoln and they actually wanted to jump me mm-hmm. because, you know, and I can name a couple of the cats that, I'm, that I know now that we all would know that was part of that group. Yeah. And if it wasn't for my family members, that was like, if you roll on him, you got to roll on all of us. Yeah. And they ain't want that smoke. But, yeah. and it had nothing to do with anything other than, oh, well, I don't like the way you look. Yeah. You ain't, you ain't with us. You ain't down with us because you ain't never been oppressed. I guess it was, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird yeah. 14, yeah. 15 year old mentality really weird so i think that's why they call it that's why they say prejudice is it's the primary determinant of discriminatory behavior right because we start to form these these opinions of people early based on experiences that we go through or or people we listen to right and when in reality we should not be doing that right at least negative opinions you know